looks like we're about halfway up. They look perfectly still intact, almost in the same way they were back then. Incredible, incredible place. Good morning from Oyantaytambo. We woke up early this morning. We are drinking some tea outside and the view is so pretty. We're surrounded by mountains. It's kind of a cloudy morning. We'll show you. So today we're going to Pinkyuna and it's the ruins that are right above in the mountains that kind of overlook Oyantaytambo. There are a few of them, but these ones are right above our hotel and we've got access to them. So we'll be showing you yet again another Incan site. Oyanta has so much to offer. I think the hike should take maybe 30, 40 minutes to get up there. It's pretty steep we've heard, but it's not that long. We can handle it. And I'll tell you a little more about the place as we go up toward it. So really quick before we leave, we are staying at Apu Lodge. That's where we've been staying every time we're in Oyantaytambo. And look at it, it's beautiful. Gorgeous gardens and views. We are gonna miss this when we go home. Yeah, really comfortable, awesome place. So when you come here, definitely stay. And the Apu owner Lodge. is so nice. Yeah. <laughs> so look, we've only walked for less than a minute and our hotel is right back there. So look at this. The ruins that we're going to are right up here. So this mountain we're on right now is called Pinkuyuna, for which the archeological site and the ruins are named. And on this side of the mountain, a lot of these buildings are like military outposts like this. So that could, they could watch for the Spanish coming. So that we know our way back. <laughs> Look, the inside of left. some properties, you can see still Inca. Inca. So these are Inca oh, yeah. streets. All original. Okay, so we just took the trail and we're kind of at the beginnings of all of the ruins. So there are several different types of buildings up here. There are ceremonial, military outposts, and then there are the food storage places. If you try to hike to Pinkyuna, you will be seeing a lot of others around as well. There is a ton up here. Uh, the food storage ruins, those are the ones that are more famous because they're overlooking the city. You can see them from everywhere in Oyantaytambo. So we'll probably get there one of the last places. But look at all of this There's before. Some great stops along the way. Oh, yeah. So you can see here in the town below, it was built on a grid system of Inca. And you can still see exposed walls of the Inca throughout the city. It's one of the only cities in Peru that's built like that, original. So buildings like this, they were made for food storage. You can tell they put the food in there and then there's little windows for air circulation down below. Looks like we're about halfway up. Look at the view of that main unit there. That's what the food storage containers look like. There's Lindsay. Want to say anything? I'm tired. It's very steep, but it doesn't take that long to get up there. I think we're almost there. So I think we got off trail a little bit. So that looks like a trail that everybody takes when tourists are actually here. But this is closed right now, it's just us, nobody else is here. And somehow we got into this, which might be more of an Inca trail than a, a modern day trail. 
but it's fun. Same let's, destination. Yeah, let's see if it gets us there. Hopefully, yeah, this goes to the railings. Okay. So, we're on the right track. Going back to the easy route instead of the adventure route. Folks, this is what happens when you don't wear hiking shoes. You get rocks in your boots. So when you get to Pinky Una, you're gonna look across and see huge ruins on the other side. I don't know the name of them. There they are. So those are the main ruins of the city. You have pretty amazing views from up here. All right, rocks are out of his shoes. We can move on. <laughs> We're getting closer. This place looks incredible <laughs> as we get close. I know it's just a food storage place, but I mean, that doesn't sound that uh, fantastic and spiritual and mystical, but it looks pretty cool. Yeah, the buildings themselves are just beautiful. So we're about to round the corner and it looks pretty cool. Check it out. Pinkuyuna. Let's go walk inside and see how these food storage containers worked. They look perfectly still intact as if they're almost in the same way they were back then. I'm sure they had some wood or hay roofs before, probably. I'm guessing. They're huge too. They're probably 30 feet tall. Wow. Well, probably more. No, they're probably more. Okay. We're going inside. Look at this. Wow. There are multiple levels. They're much bigger in person when you get here than what they look like on the side of the cliff. We are in an Inca storage house. So I believe we're in the walkway between. This isn't actually where they would store the food, but take a look through one of these windows and we'll see where the food was actually kept. Okay, so this must have been actually where they kept the food. You can tell from the roof, or you can tell from where there would be a roof right here that this would have been enclosed, most likely. And then these pockets, these little what look like doors, they were built for air circulation. And they're huge. So these were built in the 15th century and they were made to store the grains from around the area. So the agricultural terraces, they're all around here. You can see them wherever you go, the Inca terraces, and they're meant to keep them. <laughs> now we're going into the top storage house. Look at these stairs, not very safe. There used to be a bunch of grain right here of the Inca long, long ago, and we're standing in it. So they made these storage houses way high up here because when you're at higher altitude, there's cooler temperatures, more wind. And another reason that they were built at this high elevation and on the side of the cliff is to protect the food, protect it from the Spanish or any invaders <laughs> that might take it because they must have had a ton of food stored up in these places because they're huge and there are a lot of them. They're on the other side of the mountain as well. So they must have had a problem keeping their food safe and keeping it fresh because they wouldn't have built so many of these. Also, besides the fact that these are just really cool storage houses, these are some of the best views of Ollanta, I think. You can see the whole city <laughs> and it is free to come here. Incredible, incredible place. Now let's go to one of the other storage units. Wow, look at these stairs. Barely stairs going up. We're gonna get the best view of Oyente Tambo from this 
up here. Okay, we've reached the top of the storage units, but you're in luck. There are terraces here, and then there are some other ruins and archeological sites above. And we don't know if we'll get all the way up there, but let's see what we can find. There are just endless Inca sites here in Oyanta. Everywhere <laughs> you look. And here is the view, my friend. Here you can see all the different storage houses. So we're above Pincayuna and there's a bunch more above it. Looks like other ruins and things, but there isn't really a trail, so we're not sure if we're really allowed to go that way. So this might be the end of the road. <laughs> they're pretty small, so I'm sure they're still cool, but not as cool as this. And our friend was telling us that some of these smaller ones, these little outcrops of rock and wall, uh, they almost look like people, so they were meant to scare enemies away. Yeah, to so, intimidate them so they would be less likely to attack. So they thought they looked like people so that there were more Inca people waiting for them than there actually were. The Incas were smart. This really shows you how small the town of Ollantaytambo is. It's really just this. So the other day we took you to Intihuatana, which is over there on the other side above those ruins. And that's where supposedly the Inca people would sacrifice themselves to the Apu, Apu Veronica, and or to the sun. They don't really, they aren't really sure. But also they thought that they might bring the bodies or they might walk from there to right over here. We're very close to it now. People found a ton of bones, a ton of bones from the Inca at the bottom of this cliff here. And they think that maybe they threw themselves off the cliff as a sacrifice. The bones are now gone. Everybody took them, but pretty interesting to think what that might have been for. So this is our view right now. So we are taking some time to just sit and soak in the magic of this place. A lot of times recently when we've been going to these very sacred spots, we haven't had a lot of time to just sit and enjoy it. We're usually kind of rushed, so it's nice just to take it all in. So Peru has been our home for six months and Jeez. it's kind of sad to think that we're leaving. I mean, we're very excited to go home. We think it's the right time. We feel like it's time to go back. But a huge piece of our heart is always going to be with Peru. We will never, ever forget our times here. For those of you guys who are new here or if you didn't watch our last video, so it's the time of the pandemic, COVID-19, and that is why we're finally going home. We got stuck in Peru. Stuck in Peru, but we've loved it uh, for the last six months. And we finally found a flight so we could go home because borders might be closed for the next six months. We could be stuck in Peru for a year, a year and a half without being able to do much. Except for this, which we got special <laughs> privileges to see this because we got kind of a, we knew somebody that could get us in here and that's why we have this place all to ourselves. But normally most things in Peru right now are closed, even things that are out in the middle of nature. So, we never expected it would go this long, and <sighs> we all. thought maybe it'd go a month of lockdown. But now, six months later, we're sitting here on top of some Inca storage bins. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> yeah. So we had planned on a South America trip, and we were only going to be in Peru probably for one month. But it's been six, and part of us is very happy that we got that. We got to see a lot more than we thought we would have. Also a lot less because a lot of things were closed. Yeah. Some of the best things that we so, really wanted to see. No Machu Picchu. We didn't get to see those. But because we had more time in some of these cities like Ollantaytambo, we got to see a lot more than we would have if we had only stopped here for a few days if it wasn't for the pandemic. So some good has come out of it and we've seen a lot more in a way of Peru, gotten a lot closer to it. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. This pandemic has really forced us to slow down. So like Alex said, we wouldn't have seen half of the things we saw 
we would have just probably saw the more touristy things like Machu Picchu, Rainbow Mountains, which we're going to be seeing Rainbow Mountains soon. Stay tuned for that. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so that really shows you how great slow travel is. If you don't just try to hit a bunch of countries, a bunch of cities very quickly and just see the main points, when you spend your time, you meet the right people, you get to see the right things, and sometimes you get to see the hidden gems that you had no idea about. Mm -hmm. Like for example, if you watch our videos in this town, Oyan Taitambo, we've seen a lot of incredible things that we had no idea about and a lot of people never see. Some of the locals don't even see these things. So. And we've gotten to know the Peruvian culture more, the food, <laughs> the people, customs, traditions. We would have just zoomed right through Peru in three weeks and never had that opportunity. So there's yeah. pros and cons to fast travel and slow travel. Mm -hmm. So I guess what we're trying to say <laughs> with this amazing view, we're already feeling a little nostalgic knowing that we're going to be leaving Peru soon. We just wanted to say Peru will miss you. <laughs> we'll be back at some point. Uh, and for those of you who are still watching, we still have a few more amazing things to show you guys in Peru. And then we're going to take a break at home. And after that, we'll be back out traveling the world. So stay with us so you can see other amazing cultures, places. We're going to show you a lot. <sighs> this is crazy. <laughs> when we go home, there's going to be nothing nearly like this at all. There's nothing, even a shade of this at home. No. We are going to miss the views. Alex is going to be going home to California, and I'm going to be going home to Minnesota. In Minnesota, there's a lot of greenery and trees and lakes, but no mountains like this. And in California, there's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. No ruins, no arche archaeological sites, mountains like this, views like this, people like this, and small towns, yeah. small towns no like we're looking at. No history like this either, really. Yeah. The U.S. doesn't have a lot for history. History is very new there, and the culture as well, very new, not very traditional. So, Because it's uh, such a blend of everyone, so yeah. Yeah, there's not really anything super traditional. After being here for half a year, it's going to be odd <laughs> going home, to say the least. It's going to be kind of <laughs> culture reverse, shock. reverse culture shock going home, and it'll be very weird again. There's Lindsay getting some last photos of the place. Speaking of photos, let's show you the photos of the day. All right, we are almost to the bottom. This is gonna be the last Incan site we see in Peru. We still have a few cool things to show you guys, but no more sites like this, not that we know of. I think the so. reality has not sunken in yet that we're actually leaving. <laughs> this feels like home now. It, feel, it felt like we were never going to leave, <laughs> so this is odd. It feels surreal that we're leaving. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep trekking to the bottom. We're almost there, and then we'll find a good place to eat. Hello, amigos. This is Ollanta Itambo, part of the Sacred Valley of the Inca. Peru, uh, we want to invite you to come here and visit Ollanta Itambo, especially Casa Inca, which one is our B&B, uh, where you will uh, have the, the best uh, service, uh, everything uh, also working with the protocols. Thank you and bye-bye. <laughs> Perfect. Está bien? It's good? Casa Inca. Casa Inca, bro. All right, so that was Roger talking to you. If you stay at this place, if you stay at Casa Inca, you will have direct access to everything we did, but even more. There's so many rooms right behind this place. So this is how we got in, and this is how you can get in if you want to see that. So we have a favorite restaurant that we go to here because of the view on the top. It's called Inca's Tower Panoramic. You have 360 views of the city. And now we're here. Look at this place. Windows all around. This is the mountain we were just climbing. And we were right there. Look at that. We were 
right there, hiking around there. We also went through all of this as well. So that's the first ruin, and on the other side, you have the main Ollantaytambo ruins. Over here. And then, way up there, this is where we took the horseback ride all along here to Sun Gate, which is way up there. Surprise, surprise, we ordered some lattes. And this is one of one of the best lattes is here at this place. Don't know why, but he does it well. Yeah. Um, and right now they're running some really good prices because it's COVID time. So come check it out. How's your latte? Muy delicioso. Okay, so we got our typical breakfast here. Some huevos, arroz, palta, papas fritas, y queso. So I know we always get the same thing for breakfast pretty much, but it just, it has a mix of everything you need. It has your protein, your carbs, a vegetable of sorts. It has everything. And this whole thing was just 10 sole for each one. So... Three dollars. So about three dollars for that. This is from the jungle, it's Amazon to different play. This is from Wait, the is this this? Yeah, this is... Oh, you cooked it. Oh. Yeah, you could. You, 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 you share me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. They cook these yeah. bananas to you know? give it more flavor. It's so good. You better. Mm, it's very sweet. <laughs> these bananas are from the jungle. Are you okay? Yeah. Thank you so much. So I thought it was a gift, but it's not. He wants two sold for one banana. What the cost of our own kilo? No, cada banana por me un sol. Excuse me, it's very different from there, you know? In here it's so different. It's it's one it's one so fifty cent. Yeah, it's because it's very different. So you'll see that that guy offered the banana. He offered it to us to try. He was As like, if hey. it was a gift, like, oh, try this. Where are you from? You should try this. It's a special banana. Yeah, it's a special banana for the jungle. You have to try this. And then... Like, all uh, his family was eating it. Like, they had cooked it for themselves and they were sharing with us. <laughs> yeah, and then as we were about to go and saying thank you, he was like, oh, two, two soul for that one banana, which is a lot for fruit. For a banana. We paid two soul for, for two these. kilos of all of these mandarinas. And he offered it as a gift, but then took it back. So, so if you careful. see that guy... <laughs> a lot of times people do not just give it for free. They want something in return. You will get those special people that will give, give, give for free uh -huh. to be nice. There are a lot of nice Peruvians that have given to us, so that's why we were taken by surprise. Kind of thought that could happen, but people have been nice lately, so we didn't expect him to do that. I guess next time. Because when he gave it to me, I knew that that could be a possibility that could happen. But he seemed really nice, his family was eating him. And I didn't want to be offensive by asking, no, no thanks, or how much is it? Yeah. That's kind of rude. Yeah. But now we feel like we're going to have to do that. Which is sad, because sometimes people just do want to be nice and give you a gift. Yeah, people like that are the ones that ruin it for tourists. We like to trust people, we want to talk to locals. But then, people like that make you not trust anybody, even the nice people, because you don't know who to trust. So then, we pay them the two soul, which isn't the end of the world, obviously. But yeah. it just kind of took away from the nice gesture that it could have been. Exactly. So, if you live in Ollanta, you probably know that store, you know who it is. Stay away from there, <laughs> or from him at least. So today, we're going to Pinky Yuno. Pinky Pinky Yuno. <laughs> Pinky uh, what was I saying? Also to protect their food from people getting it, right? Yeah, another okay, reason there. Um, another reason there. Should I do it or...? You can. And here is the view, my friends. Oops. <laughs> uh, and for those of you who are still watching, we still have a few more amazing things to show. show. Hey guys, we can only do so much on YouTube and we only put out a video every two or three days. So if you want more, if you want daily stuff, you should head to Instagram, find us at Alexander Travel Bum. 
and that's where you'll find daily stories and photos about our travels. Hey, thanks for making it all the way through this video. If you want to watch more, click one of these videos. Subscribe because I'm traveling all around the world and I'm sharing the whole thing with you. Thanks.